Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, and this weekend is the Pokemon Trading Card Game World Championships, and I thought, you know what? We'd better have a bit of a video previewing the decks that you should be watching out for. So, this is my video of 10, and I use that a little bit loosely, decks that could win the World Championship this weekend. And we're going to start off with a deck that I never like playing against. It's Decidueye, Alolan Ninetales, Espeon EX. Quite simply, this deck just tries to prey on evolution decks. And pay attention as I go through this list, ladies and gentlemen. There are a lot of evolution decks. Decidueye spreads some damage with Feather Arrow. Alolan Ninetales spreads some damage around for just a double colorless energy. And then Espeon comes in for one colorless energy and devolves all the Pokemon down a stage. So you spread enough damage around with Decidueye and Alolan Ninetales. And then Espeon comes in and literally wins the game. Although you are a little bit vulnerable to ability lock like Hexmaniac and Garbodor with your Decidueye. Sticking on the Decidueye theme, another deck that could work is Decidueye with Vile Plume. Now this is taking advantage of Forest of Giant Plants, which is being rotated on September the 1st. And essentially, you set up Vile Plume to block your opponents and your own items while spreading damage with Feather Arrow. And this deck really comes down to whether you can set up. John Kettler played it to a second place finish at the recent North American International Championships. When it sets up, it wins. When it doesn't, it loses. Good deck, but you're going to have to have quite a lot of faith in it to play it at such a big tournament. We've also got Garbodor. This Garbodor, the one with Trash Valanche. 20 damage for one energy for every item in your opponent's discard. Single energy, stage one, very powerful. Now, a lot of people are saying that the best matchups are when you play it with Espeon. You use the Energy Evolution Eevee, attach a single Psychic Energy, evolve up into Espeon, and you're immediately hitting 30 plus Confusion. 60 with a choice band, add a double colorless, and then Psychic does a bunch of damage. Worried about that GX getting KO'd? Just run with Garbodor. Not to mention the fact that in all these Garbodor decks, you can run the Ability Lock Garbodor to shut down all the abilities. And again, pay attention as I go through the rest of these decks, because a lot of them rely on abilities. Don't fancy Espeon, that's okay, you can use Drampa instead. 150 damage for free energy, including double colorless, as long as you've got one damaged Pokemon on your bench. You can use Rainbow Energy to do that damage, but honestly, just use Team Magma Secret Base, it's better. And when you can be hitting 180 with a choice band on the second turn of the game, your opponent is going to have a very long game. By which I mean a frustrating game, it's probably actually going to be a very short game indeed. Sticking with Drampa, and this is a bit of an outsider, I'll admit. But I think Zoroark Drampa could be a deck to watch out for this weekend. I've already told you how good Drampa is. Zoroark's got a really good ability that means it can always jump into the active. A decent attack for a double colorless energy, which means either you're hitting good damage or your opponent is not benching Pokemon they'd like to be benching. Either's good. And you've even got Zoroark Break that for one Dark Energy can just copy an attack. Tapu Bulu, you one hit KO it for a single energy. Drampa, you one hit KO it for a single energy if you've got a choice band. You see where I'm going with this? Powerful deck. How about Metagross? Now, Metagross has a huge weakness problem to Volcanion and Turtonator. We'll see them in a moment. But then again, you're hitting for weakness against Alolan Ninetales and Gardevoir. Downsides of Mega Metagross, it's a stage 2 deck. It's a little bit slow, but you've got 250 HP. You've got a resistance to Garbodor. And if you don't get one hit KO'd, you can manually retreat discarding the free energy. You can recover those energy using the abilities of multiple Metagross. And then you can play a Max Potion to heal the Metagross that just got hit. Essentially, if you don't one hit KO Metagross, 
You don't KO Metagross. Your opponent just plays a Max Potion. Even if they don't play a Max Potion, you're going to have to play something like Guzma to drag it off the bench and get a KO. It is an extremely powerful Pokemon, although it is vulnerable to Ability Lock. Speaking of these fire decks that give Metagross fits, how about Volcanion and or Turtonator? Turtonator hits 160 for free energy, 190 with a choice band. Volcanion's got the steam up ability that allows you to do extra damage if you just discard fire energies from your hand. And the baby Volcanion, hey Nick, does 20 damage while attaching extra energy to your bench to help you set up. You've got the new Kiawe supporter that can help you get set up really quickly. You've got the new ho that you can just do 180 with. Although I've said it once and I'll say it again. I don't like it. Garbodor, Espeon, etc. will have a field day when you've got that much energy on you. Though 180 damage, it, it's awfully tempting, ladies and gentlemen. It really, really is. It's weak to Alolan Ninetales, and anybody can tech if they're playing a Stage 1 deck. Vaporeon to try and beat it. And actually, as a side note, people can tech Flareon in to try and beat Metagross as well. But it's just the raw power of Volcanium. Although, once again, it relies on abilities. Vika Vault Tapu Bulu is a deck that I'm in love with but could never play in a big tournament. Tapu Bulu for free energy does 120 or 180 if you're willing to discard all that energy. A lot of decks now, instead of playing Choice Band, are going to more of a Fighting Fury Belt build. Just because it gives you that extra bulk to stop those Pokemon like Zoroark, like Metagross, getting the easy one-hit KO on you. You use Vika Volt to get the energy, or at least two of the energy, onto you. You attach a third manually, and then you're just hitting for great damage. It's such a good deck. It does hurt if you don't get the Vika Volt early. Similarly, it is vulnerable to ability lock, but oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, is this a deck to watch out for? And the last of the old decks that I think is really good is Greninja. Greninja doesn't always set up. But when it does set up, you can block your opponent's abilities, and we've already seen how useful that is. Or you can do 80 damage and get all the energy off of Greninja. And with Gardevoir around, that's going to be big. And then, of course, you've got Greninja Break, who can just do 60 damage by discarding an energy from your hand. And, of course, with Greninja having free retreat, you can do more than one of these giant water shurikens every turn. Greninja won't always set up and it will lose some games because it doesn't. But when it sets up, there are very few decks that can really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. Although do watch out for Tapu Bulu and Galissapod, who will run through it like the proverbial hot knife through the proverbial butter. Now there are a couple of new decks to watch out for this weekend, chief amongst them Gardevoir. Now Gardevoir really has got a target on its back, which could lead to a lot of counters being played, which could leave it to be a risky play. But between the ability that allows you to attach extra energy, I mean let's face it, let's say you've got two Gardevoir out. You can attach a double colourless for your turn. One extra fairy energy for each of your Gardevoir, plus a choice band, you're then doing 150 damage if your opponent has no energy on them, and if you had no energy on at the start of your turn. Because you do 30 damage for every energy attached to both active. Gardevoir, ladies and gentlemen, is a great deck. Again, it's a stage 2, so maybe you won't get the rare candy. Again, it's reliant on abilities and evolutions, and it is weak to Metagross. But there are so many things going for it, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a bit silly. And the other new deck to really watch out for is Galissapod. Galissapod for a single grass energy does 120 damage if it was on the bench and became active that turn. Now, as a side note, that means that if you evolve an active Wimpod, you will not get the extra damage. You've got to bring it active as a Galissapod. But with Forest of Giant Plants, you can do this on the first turn of the game. That means that you can be hitting 120 from the first turn going forward. And you can play this Vaporeon and this Flareon to hit extra weaknesses. 
I worry it's a little bit underpowered. And I worry about the weakness to Volcanion. And any deck that techs in a Flareon. I mean, even Garbodor could just go and chuck in a random Flareon. But I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. 120 every turn from turn one going forward. That's got to be a little bit exciting. Now, there are a couple of other decks that you could look at this weekend. I'm not going to go into these in great detail. Although, any of the decks I'm talking about, if you search my channel for the name of any of these Pokemon, you will see videos about the Pokemon, the decks, etc. There's too many, really, to link in the description. But there's a search option on YouTube. Go and search for it. But these are a couple of extra decks that I'm just going to mention at the end of the video here. Persimian. I feel it's a little bit underpowered, but you know what? It can hit decent energy. It's all basic Pokemon. It hits Psychic Weakness with Mew, Fighting Weakness through Persimian, and it's just a fast, consistent deck. Darkrai gets better with the new Darkrai GX, and it was decent anyway. But with Gallade running around in Gardevoir decks, there will be some Persimian. Anyone can tech in Marshadow to beat it. Plus, of course, it's vulnerable if it doesn't get enough energy out. I just don't think it's a great pick for this weekend. Alolan Ninetales, we've got the new one in Burning Shadows that blocks attacks from EXs and GXs. To be put simply, it's weak to Metagross, and Metang will make short work of the non-GX. And... It's just too vulnerable to ability lock. Any deck that might otherwise be shut down by the non-GX can just play Hex Maniac to beat it. This might be a really good deck after rotation, but I don't like it in the world's format. Rayquaza is a deck some people are talking about, but you know what? Lots of items, vulnerable to Garbodor, really ability reliant, not to mention the fact that anyone can just play a Sudo Wudu in their deck, which would be terrible for Rayquaza. I don't think this is Rayquaza's last hurrah. And it makes me super sad to say it, but I don't think Vespaquen's a great pick for Worlds. It can play Flareon, it can play Vaporeon, but I just think it's a bit underpowered against a lot of these big decks. And I'm sorry to say it, I love it, I play it a lot online, twitch.tv slash ptcgradio, but I just don't think it's good enough at Worlds. So, now that I've gone through all the decks which I think we'll be expecting at Worlds, it's your turn. Chuck down in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. What deck do you think is going to win Worlds? Give me a prediction. I don't ask enough questions in these videos, but there's a question in this one. What deck do you think is going to win Worlds? Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy and Twitch at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. That's where the live action is. And if you want to support this channel, get some bonus podcasts, etc., then go and check out out patreon.com slash ptcg radio but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching ptcg radio